We saw Eritros and Volterix compete at BlizzCon together in 2017, and they're back with a new face, Greggy on Restoration Shaman. I'm curious to see how his healing is in a tournament setting, facing such legends such as Minpoike. Early on, change my mind, initiate the crowd control chain. They need to keep it going. They do manage to do it off the back of Minpoike's Cyclone. We see Maledict now committed as Eritros looks to counter-aggress. Good counter-engage by CG and Gold. Now they just need a tad bit more damage here to force a cloak of shadows. Acro dips low. Minpoike tells him to hold on to it as he vanishes away from the fight, denying the kill. Fried Kitty opts to retreat, having now seen the defense of Earth and Wall Totem committed, but he's still overextended. Perfect Shadow Fury timing. Barely closes it out there. Nice play by Eritros. A bit of a panic attack for Change My Mind. Eritros played that perfectly. As soon as Change My Mind wanted to open up, he dropped the Infernals immediately, instantly using his Mortal Coil as well to deflect that attack, and then using his Dark Soul to force Change My Mind into a very defensive position. And that is not the spot you want to be as a Rogue Mage team. You want to try to get cooldowns very early on with good crowd control, but with the destru uh, good destruction Warlock breaking it up can make it very difficult. I really want to see if this ends up being a Warlock Shaman meta. I mean, Poike's mana doing better than Greggy's at this point, so likely the late game in favor of Change My Mind, but they need to start getting crowd control. Votarius denies the Cyclone. Fried Kitty cannot find a Polymorph. The crowd control is completely diffused by CGN Gold. They're going to be stable and now looking to get aggressive. Surprisingly, they're attacking Fried Kitty the Mage. I'm wondering if this is a bait and switch. They want to try and bait Minpoike into switching Life Bloom onto the Mage and then go after the Rogue when Leg Sweep is available. I'd be very surprised to not see Voltaria switch targets. It's a, I feel like a bit of a blunder having now committed the Touch of Death. He's just going to race it, try and force an Ice Block. Iron Bark should be enough defense for Fried Kitty, I do believe, as Eritros cannot get in line of sight. He's marching his way forward, now switching his attention to Acro. I would have liked to have seen that attack by CGN Gold onto Acro instead of Fried Kitty. Valtarius is still just pummeling away, what? though, with tons of damage. Maybe he finds an ice block by himself. Eritros secures crowd control in Minpoike. Now Mortal Coils finally finding line of sight. That Chaos Bolt hits huge. Fried Kitty, is he going to flounder? No. Denies the kill. Temporal Shield bounces him back into the fight. Now, change my mind, need to start getting aggressive because they've really not been finding any crowd control onto Greggy. Yeah, Fried Kitty really just tanking a lot of this damage. Frozen Orb does get dropped onto Eritros. Ray of Frost as well. A Cyclone coming in from Minpoike. Minpoike, I don't think, has been cycloning as much in this game as it is a very expensive spell. Minpoike actually going to be sneaking away for a drink right now. Wants to recover his mana. If he can sit down, this is actually a really good spot for Change My Mind to be in. Fried Kitty just playing very defensive. Polymorph Span on Valteriox. Minpoike manages to escape. And now, Change My Mind, they have a commanding mana lead. Yeah, at this point, nice and tangling root on the Fell Hunter behind the pillar by Minpoike before engaging. Now that will not be able to interrupt as it actually marks his bounces its way back in the fight. I like this switch back to Acro, but now Acro has his defense available. I feel like Voltarius wasted the better part of a minute attacking the mage, getting nothing when Acro had nothing to survive it. This is a bit of a targeting selection blunder on the side of CGN Gold. They had a great start and then just threw it away. Acro's defense is now available as he's getting aggressive. Minpoike secured a drink, regenerated his mana to a huge lead against Greggy. Has changed my mind. Look for maybe a later game kill. Eritros finally counter aggressing. The Infernals have landed in these Chaos Bolts with that Shadow Fury. Could be deadly. He sneaks one in. The counter spell was late, taking half of a health. Now Cloak of Shadows is available, but not actually traded. A bit of a disrespect there by Acro, but the pressure is still mounting on the two targets here. Minpoike has to heal two players. He doesn't have the cooldowns to do it. Ice Block forced as a result. Voltarius now even switching to Minpoike to add even more pressure on the Cooker. Minpoike's got a lot of work to recover. Yeah, and I don't mind the strategy coming in from CGN Gold. Eritros in the midfield, just pressuring down Acro, just forcing out the Cloak of Shadows. In the meantime, Volterix is sitting on Fried Kitty, although they're not you know, hitting the same target, they're putting out as much pressure as possible and forcing Minpoike to put out more heal over time effects and use more of his precious mana. Now we see a switch to Voltarius has changed my mind to change their target, but that's going to leave the Destruction Warlock open, and Eritros gates in to get a fear on Minpoike. Nice offensive use of the Demonic Gateway. We typically see that for Warlocks to run away, but yeah, he's actually using it to engage crowd control, and that could be clutch later in the game as Minpoike no longer has Gladiator's Medallion to break out of fear. Both Acro and Fried Kitty are now limited on defense, but if we look over on the side of CG and Gold, Greggy's mana seems to be the desperate situation for their side while they're sitting comfortably on cooldowns. Mana is a big problem. We see blind. Greggy opts to trade the Gladiator's Medallion to break out of that crowd control. Minpoike tries to secure 
more, but Greggy uses the demonic gateway to escape from that crowd control has been pointed across the map. Really nice play by Greggy, but how much longer can he keep healing? He's basically running on fumes at this point. CGN Gold, they either need to try and get a drink to regenerate that mana or look for a kill soon. Yeah, dampening has now kicked in, so it's going to become more and more difficult for both of these healers. Eritros still sitting around 60% health, looking for Chaos Bolts, finds two on Fried Kitty, actually getting interrupted. Nicely done, but still, Volteric's all over him, oh. putting out massive pressure. This could be the first ice block as it gets lower. Iron Bark gets traded out, but it's overlapped with the ice block, and swap. now Volteric's making a swap on him in Hoike to continue the pressure. Yeah, Volteric's constantly switches to the healer, so while a mage is in ice block, he can't take any damage. So Volteric's, instead of just standing around, waiting for it, switches targets and then puts more pressure in a different spot and now Minpoike has to both worry about himself and his mage and he's having a difficult time because he committed the iron bark on top of ice block there's no reason to make that trade that's definitely a miscommunication or maybe a panic attack from the pressure of CGN but now they're down two cooldowns in the bank Greggy caught into a polymorph though as fried kitty tries to carry the game acro still is on the back foot Minpoike is spending a lot of mana to heal that back and the mana is slowly evening out on that front the advantage that changed my mind set up is potentially going to be lost. Chaos Bolt's now flying. There's no ice blocks. Fried Kitty ducks around the corner with Minpoike, but they left Acro out in center field. He's going to shadow step, deny Eritros' pressure, but Volcarius is the one hard carrying. Yeah, Fists of Fury putting out huge damage onto Acro with no evasion available. He's going to just tank all this Windwalker damage. Double Mortal Coil coming in. Incapacitate now on Minpoike. And once again, CGN Gold, they have the mana lead. There's a Hex on Minpoike. Gets the spell by Fried Kitty. Fried Kitty's still sitting on his icy veins, but with no ice blocks left, it's going to be such a vulnerable target target uh, in the later game. Greggy has been doing a great job. This is the first time we've seen him in a tournament paired up with two BlizzCon competitors and he's really taken it to change my mind. We they do see an attack onto Voltarius. He's going to get aggressive, getting a triple stun. If Eritros can get in line of sight of this, it will be absolute devastation, but he's just not able to get in line of sight. It's all riding on Voltarius. Touch of death explodes. Tons of damage. Then Poike exchanges, but it's at the cost of basically the rest of his mana and this swapping from Voltarius is really paying off and Poike he has to heal two targets, but he timed his innervate, making that big expensive heal wild growth completely free. Now looking to sneak away and get a drink. Minpoike with perfect reactions. Nobody is stopping it. They don't know where he is. Rain of Fire misses. Minpoike gets a ton of mana and change my mind. Take the lead. Yeah, change my mind in a commanding position now, but Acro still a little bit vulnerable with no evasion. He does have the Cloak of Shadows, but doesn't want to use it too late here. Can't be greedy, especially with Minpoike having such a huge mana lead. They just need to hold on a little bit longer. Eritros now into a kidney shot. Acro and Fried Kitty looking for some damage. Volteric still all over Fried Kitty, trying to slow him down just a little bit, but this mana lead from Change My Mind really gives him such a big advantage. Oh, that nether ward on the Maledict by Eritros might just carry the game as they go for the kill. Fried Kitty doesn't have much to stay in this. A defensive blind by Acro. A quick reaction, realizing that the late game is in the bag. They've got the mana lead. Let's use our biggest crowd control defensively to stay in it a little bit longer. Now Fried Kitty secures Polymorphs. Eritros is suddenly alone. CG and Gold battled it out, but Minpoike's opportunities to sneak away and regenerate mana have kept his team in the fight to this point and potentially enough to close. Voltarius is doing whatever he can to create pressure, but there's so much more mana in the tank for Minpoike. He jumps into the fight, bashes up Voltarius. Eritros is getting pressured, but he does manage to sneak in a fear. Acro needs to be careful. He's got no Gladiator's Medallion. Fist of Fury. He's going to trade Cloak of Shadows immediately, realizing that situation. They have the lead. They just need to stay alive a tad bit longer. Although Chaos Bolt is always a threat, they still haven't completely secured the game. Yeah, Acro with the Vendetta coming up in around 20 seconds has the Smoke Bomb as well. Aerotross with no Trink is going to be very vulnerable. I think CGN Gold, they realize it. Greg and Aerotross are just going to be standing on top of each other. Don't want to get too separated. Sitting on the gateway. Full Kidney Shot does get dropped. Fried Kitty looking for some damage. Throws it a flurry, blinks in, looking for some crowd control by Volterix with counter pressure, gets the double fist of fury into a leg sweep, and now Acro and Fry Kitty could be in some trouble. Aerotross still rotting down low. Greggy, no mana left whatsoever, and at 25% dampening, I think it's going to be too much for him to handle. Aerotross. What are you going to do? Your healer's in a polymorph. He can't save you. He's completely alone. Benpoike stuns him up, but Acro can't make it back to the target. Voltarius MVP play there. Keeps Acro off of Eritros for a couple of seconds. Maybe buying him time for a comeback. Acro is low. The Infernals have landed. That's going to boost Eritros' damage. If there was a chance for a comeback, it would be now, but there's really not much left. Greggy saves the day. Buys Eritros more time. He manages to sneak in a Chaos Bolt, despite the huge mana lead. If another Chaos Bolt connects, Acro surely will go down. He He's forced to retreat away. CGN Gold stay alive. 
Yeah, nice counter pressure there. Touch of death was used by Volterix, forcing Acro defensive. That was the only thing CGN Gold could do with the Infernal Stun, as well as that touch of death. Changed my mind, they had to back off just a little bit. Eritros looking for a fear and a Chaos Bolt gets interrupted. Nicely done by Fried Kitty. Greggy actually regenerated a little bit of mana there. Mintoike once again gonna be using his Innervate to top off his team. Everyone from Change My Mind is stable in this situation. Actually, everyone in the game is stable at this point, but Chaos Bolt still connecting onto Acro as he looks to reconnect onto Eritros. All right, they're gonna switch back to Fried Kitty, but he's already got Cold Snap and Ice Block, which basically means he's got two Ice Blocks. He can go immune to damage twice, and I can't help but feel that the swapping of targets have changed my, or the swapping of targets by CG and Gold is just completely incorrect. They go after the most durable target every time and waste so much time going through the defense. For example, here, Fried Kitty can just easily Ice Block, trade and immune the damage, then look to counter aggress. And if they try to switch back to Acro, he'll have Cloak of Shadows and the target selection of CG and Gold has been a bit all over the place. And if they had been more nailed down in terms of strategy on their targets, I think they actually may have been able to close this game out earlier. Yeah, Fried Kitty uses the Icy Veins. What's he gonna get done with it? Doesn't look like he's able to do anything. Just running behind the pillar, summoning a water elemental, really not finding the damage. And that is such a crazy offensive cooldown for the Frost Mage to just be sort of throwing away in that situation. I think that was ideal for change my mind. Acro still taking a little bit of damage. I don't mind Volterix swapping all over the place, forcing him to point gain. Nice roll kick by Volterix as well, finding the damage. Aerotroth forced to use the unending resolve as Greg. He caught into the bash. It doesn't look like there's gonna be any follow-up crowd control. No threat of Polymorph. Aerotroth getting lower. Fried Kitty has to back off. He does have one ice block left, but Mpoike is spending so much mana to keep both Acro and Fried Kitty alive. I don't know how Greggy's done it. He's healed with basically zero mana for this long, but it may not be enough as they try to kill Fried oh. Kitty. He's got one ice block left, but he's holding on to it. Aerotroth did flow. Greggy, how are you gonna do this, man? You got nothing left, and he still just hangs on that ring of peace. Prevents Acro, but Acro moves over, gets crowd control, and secures the kill. Change my mind, stay in it off the back of Minpoike's drinks throughout the Fernal Stuns. Valteriax with his incapacitate as well. It's going to be really difficult for Minpoike to play aggressive if he has to. CGN has a fantastic comp here today with the changes that we have seen. We expect it to be very strong. Minpoike was able to play out of his mind in the last game. Will he be able to do it again? Will Change My Mind find themselves on match point? Change My Mind, they got fourth place in cup number one, and this is Minpoike's redemption here today. He faces a elimination in the lower bracket but carried the team on his back although now in game number two Eritros has snuck in a lot of crowd control gets denied on some follow-up by fried kitty but chaos bolts now flying in towards his face they stack up for a double leg sweep bit of a mistake here by change my mind that this could cost them a lot of defense early on and it will ice block force within seconds of this match starting the crowd control chain just keeps going as they switch some damage to acro and cg and gold once again have the early game lead they need to not throw this away yeah they got evasion cloak of shadows fried kitty actually trinketed right before the ice block as well so overlapping those key defensives now he can't trink it out and temporal shield at high hp if he gets caught in a leg sweep again could be devastating especially volterix having that touch of death still available cg and gold definitely in the driver's seat of game number two well-timed Temporal Shield there by Fried Kitty, soaking up two Chaos Bolts and then healing them back almost instantaneously. Valtarius now leading the charge with Touch of Death. That Ring of Peace perfectly placed, denying any Polymorphs from Fried Kitty. Nice moves by Valtarius, but Eritros is too far away. Maybe he should have dropped a gateway to go aggressive. We often see Warlocks use it defensively, but I think in this specific instance that he can afford to use it aggressively and get on top of his opponents. If he was there to back up Valtarius on that nice play, that was easily the second ice block of the game. And then if that happened, one more time it's the end of the match now every trust pushing forward securing crowd control on the healer min poike denying any heals Valtarius leads the charge with just raw pressure fried kitty soaks it up with temporal shield and actually just launches his maledicts at Valtarius. a bit of a misplay on fried kitty's part there that's a very important trinket to just not simply throw away then poike jumps right on top of fried kitty for some reason and actually just lands himself into a double stun and maybe an, a second ice ball this is big mistakes by change my mind yeah so one thing i'm noticing in this game is Minpoike does not have the support to help Fried Kitty as much as we'd normally see from a Rogue Mage Druid. He's really not throwing out the Cyclone, so Volterix basically has free reign on a Fried Kitty, and unfortunately for him, he's not able to build up the damage that he needs in this matchup, and they're gonna have to play for the long game if they wanna close it out. I just wanna see CGN Gold just run them down. They pick the small map, try and push them over, get a gateway aggressively maybe on the top. 
You see Valtarius gets swapped to here as change my mind, have to find a new target. Although if they're left in midfield, Eritros has ramped his damage up quite a lot. These Chaos Bolts could be devastating. He does get counterspelled. Good defensive play here by Fried Kitty. They need to stall these Chaos Bolts out for a few more seconds. They drop Smoke Bomb on Eritros to deny him from Chaos Bolting the Mage Fried Kitty. That's a nice next level defensive play by Acro as it seems to be their only win condition at the moment is to try and outmana Greggy. Polymorph landed. No damage. They sap out of the Polymorph, but really not going to be resulting in too much here, I don't think. And Minpoike has managed to sneak away. They have to deny it. Voltarius tries to, but he's just snared up too much. And Poiki managed to at least regenerate some amount of mana in that exchange and continue their advantage. Yeah, Greggy did a great job there throwing down a totem on him and Poike to stop him from drinking. Doing it once again. So MVP Greggy in this matchup. But Poike, he still has a mana lead. Fried Kitty just trying to do whatever he can. He's just kiting away. It's basically a 1v1 between Acro and Eritros, and then another 1v1 between Valterix and Fried Kitty. Both casters just trying to avoid as much damage from these melee as possible, really limit their uptime and, and avoid their damage output. Greggy having to play a little bit more offensive on him if Poike could actually help with potentially offensive purges and wind shears on the Fried Kitty to shut him down. Now Eritros actually deflects Acro with some Chaos Bolts as he's forced to run back to Min Poike's line of sight. Double Shadow Fear coming in. Another Chaos Bolt connects on Fried Kitty. Is there any crowd control on Min Poike? It doesn't look like any available just yet. Oh. Once again, Volterix really having oh. a difficult time landing. They dispelled Min Poike's Innervate instantly. You cannot use Innervate out in the open against a Shaman Warlock. They will dispel that and remove his bonus free healing. That may be a way for CGN Gold to stay in the mana fight. Volterius has decided, all right, I'm going to attack Min Poike, I guess, moving into the late game and try and burn his mana even quicker, but he is running Guardian Affinity. Gets caught out of bear form, actually. Nice moves by Volterius. Fried Kitty, though, is there to deny the kill. And Poike in a bit of a panic attack on that swap, committed a lot of his defense, and if he's caught within the next minute or so, could be his life. We do finally see counter-aggression as Greggy places that earthen wall totem, and Poike goes for a drink, gets denied by Greggy's earthbind totem. Greggy really on point at the moment here, both defensively and offensively, but inevitably, there's just a huge lead for Change My Mind, and CG and Gold, they're gonna have to do something miraculous soon. Yeah, they need to find pressure. They need to converge on one target in this matchup. But Eritros is being shut down so much by this assassination rogue. Paired with the prop mage. Vendetta has been used. Now Eritros could be in a little bit of trouble. Greggy's going to have to heal him up. Channeling out a very efficient healing wave. But it gets cheap shot on it. Nicely done by Acro. Setting up his team with that vanish. Now Eritros all by himself. Got into a kick. Still Greggy into the polymorph. Can Fried Kitty find it a follow up? Crowd control. And Boyke still just playing in the back. Trying to keep his team hot, hot it up so they can continue to play a Eritros trying to set up for the kill, gets denied by Fried Kitty. Valtteri still keeping pressure on Acro. Greggy, nice totem snipes on Minpoike throughout this fight, denying drinks, getting crowd control for his team. He's definitely looking good for his first tournament debut, really, with both Eritros and Valtteri. Unfortunately, Minpoike just got the upper hand in terms of mana regeneration and awareness to constantly look for drinks. Perhaps Greggy should look for those opportunities more as well in this specific series. Eritros pushes forward. They have to get in line of sight. They have to back Valtteri up during these moments. They could easily be forcing ice blocks if Eritros could get in line of sight. He just does not have the mobility to do so. He finally has that demonic gateway up top. And Minpoike has snuck away looking for a drink. Valtarius charges over to deny the regeneration. They have to deny Minpoike's drinks. If he's able to regenerate back to full mana, it will easily be no opportunity for them to win this game. But they've done it. They denied it. And now mana is evening out. And CGN Gold may be able to crawl back into this game. Valterix has actually found a new target in this match. He's just sitting on Minpoike, trying to get some pressure, forcing him. That uh, gateway. Very defensive. Now Eritros gates in offensively, gets caught in the kidney shot. Acro trying to shut down this pressure on him. Minpoike. Minpoike in bear form still just trying to kite away, trying to create distance. The one downside to a destruction wall because you're very limited on mobility. Fried Kitty does not want to mess with that Chaos Bolt, deciding to trade out his Ice Block. But still, Valterix, this pressure on Minpoike is insane. I mean, Minpoike is struggling. Valtarius is carrying the team. Fried Kitty Polymorphs, nice dispel by Greggy. Good fears to interrupt the follow-up. Eritros is just chaos bolting whoever walks in front of him, and we see pressure on Minpoike constantly by Valtarius. is creating split pressure. Minpoike is having to spend a lot more mana as a result. I think it's definitely a good strategy adaptation by CG and Gold. Mana has started to even out. Minpoike cannot afford to be dispelled on this next innervate. He activates it. Did they manage to dispel it? If that lightning bolt stops glowing, they have dispelled it. Doesn't look like they can. Minpoike in a great position to deny it from being dispelled. He gets 
gets free healing for these seconds and can secure more of a lead here as dampening ramps up it's going to become almost impossible for the healers to continue fighting especially at critical mass in terms of mana Minpoike sneaks away Valterius needs to stop this I don't think he knows where Minpoike is and Minpoike goes back to full mana easy close here for change my mind this game should just be in the bag Greggy sits down for a drink fried kitty gets denied on stopping it but Acro is there to get it either way and now at this point what is Greggy gonna do maybe just kill the mage that's their only option is get a kill now or nothing yeah, Fried Kitty with no ice blocks left. Still a vulnerable target. Aerotross gates away outside of the Comet Storm and the Frozen Orb. So Fried Kissy Kitty missing out on a little bit of damage there. Unfortunately, Aerotross does get interrupted, but he, he managed to avoid most of the incoming damage. At 20% dampening, it's still going to be scary for both of these teams. And Aerotross connecting these Chaos Bolts onto Acro is still really scary. Does have the evasion and Cloak of Shadows if he needs to. And oh. getting locked out. Still decent pressure here for CGN Gold, but it's just so much easier with Shadow Melt for Minpoike to escape, get in cat form, get these drinks off than it is for Greggy. All right, if Aerie Trust can stay alive for 50 more seconds, that green icon there will be available, and that is called Infernal, and it does tons of damage. Another 44 seconds. Valterius has 27 seconds before liftoff on that touch of death. And both Eritros and Valterius can combo those abilities together. Fried Kitty does not have enough defense to sustain it. So they need to stay alive to that point. But Fried Kitty obviously isn't going to make that easy. He's got crowd control secured on Greggy. He can't heal. But there's not enough damage on Eritros to find the kill. They managed to secure double leg sweep. Another defensive smoke bomb denying Eritros from casting spells. Acro is playing more of a late game dampening rogue mage style. And it's paying off. I mean, they've had the lead for the entire series. Eritros still has that window. Ten more seconds. There's already pressure on Acro. If they can create pressure in multiple points, then Poike could easily fall over. Infernal's available in five. Touch of death now. They need to target Fried Kitty on this assault. If they target anybody else, it's a huge mistake. Valtarius knows they can get the kill here if they go for it. Infernal's have landed. This is their opportunity. It's kill Fried Kitty now or nothing. Yeah, they're actually on Poike, though, I believe. And now Acro rotting down. All three members are are in trouble. Greggy almost completely tapped on mana. Eritros still has the unending resolve, but that Dark Soul is going to empower his damage quite a bit. Acro realizing it in a lot of trouble. No evasion, no Cloak of Shadows. Defensive line on Valtteriux once again, just trying to buy Minpoike as much time as possible to keep him alive. Greggy charging in. He realizes it's now or never. He has no mana left to keep Eritros alive with this Infernals. They need to make one final push to try to close out the game. I mean, they don't have the cooldowns to trade. Fried Kitty was able to evade it, but maybe now they can switch to Acro. Acro, he's a lot more susceptible. He can't do damage while running either. He's on the back foot. Then Poike's trying to stabilize so they can just turn this around, but they're in desperation mode. Polymorph's on to both targets to just stay alive, and they can't kill someone in a Polymorph. It heals them back to full. They've actually managed to stay alive this game maybe long enough. Then Poike once again sneaks away for a drink. There's no denial. They have to deny those. They decide instead to go for a kill at this point on him and Poike once again, managing to pull at least his Gladiator's Medallion. He won't be able to break out of crowd control if Airy Trust can sneak in for a fear. I'd love to see just an offensive demonic gateway. Get in there, get a Chaos Bolt, get it clean and get a kill. Airy Trust gets denied on it. Minpoike jumps across, potentially Greggy sitting down for a drink of his own, but just not able to find it. Change my mind, have been shutting down Greggy's drinks and CG and Gold need to respond the same because they're really throwing the series away otherwise. Yeah, but to be fair, I mean, it's so much easier for Change My Mind than Poike with Shadow Meld at any moment can just drop out of combat and start sipping on that water, especially in cat form with stealth becomes so scary. Fried Kitty still vulnerable here. Temporal Shield does get used, trying to redirect or re deflect some of this damage. He will get healed up quite a bit, and Poike holding on to the Iron Bark. Acro still just weaving in and out of line of sight, trying to keep up the pressure onto Aerotross. Nice little defensive ring of peace there by Volterix as he comes back, trying to keep the pressure up onto Acro. Vendetta now available for change my mind and at 40% dampening that damage is devastating on Eritros. Pre-earthen wall totem here by Greggy deflecting this attack and Fried Kitty being pressured. No ice block. Valtarius looking to carry this. There's no defense for 10 more seconds. 10 more seconds, Fried Kitty. That's all he needs. He's going to blink away to safety and manage to stay in the fight just a tad bit longer and I want to say Greggy MVP here keeping the game going at 42% dampening on no mana against Minpoike constantly resetting his mana throughout the entire fight. 
Finally, though, Acro has found his target with tons of damage. Should maybe even be able to close this game by himself, even if Fried Kitty can't support. I mean, what is Greggy really going to do? Not very much. There's a couple of Riptides and Healing Waves every couple seconds that his mana retains itself, but it may not be enough. And Eritros is trading defensives quite late. Finally, an aggressive smoke bomb. They blind Greggy as he moves in. They try and polymorph the trinket, but they actually mistime it. And that mistiming might be an opportunity for ZG and Gold to put themselves back in the match. They need seven more seconds on that Spearling Totem. Six more seconds. Infernals have landed. They're forced to retreat away. Spearling Totem, one more second. Now available for Greggy. If Greggy pulls this off, it's absolutely insane, but they might be able to. Yeah, Ice Block forced onto Fried Kitty. Now he's going to be vulnerable for the next 30 seconds. Acro into a leg sweep, and Poika has to trinket out as well. All three members from Change My Mind. They don't have their trinkets available. Acro still incredibly vulnerable. No evasion, no cloak of shadows. Aerotroth trying to take them down. Yeah. The all over him. And Poike has to keep him alive if they can just survive a little bit longer. They can take Aerotroth down. Full kidney shot now on Aerotroth as Fried Kitty pushes in, looking for game winning crowd control and damage. Double Mortal Coil. Aerotroth deflects. Still looking for a little bit more damage. Fear on Fried Kitty. Acro. Oh, that for Chaos Bolt. Out of here. Chaos Bolt lands on Acro, but he manages to survive with the faint damage reduction. But it is not enough. And CGN Gold, they hang on. Greggy heals through. Rogue Mage at 50. They want whatever comp they feel is best in the situation and once again they're going to be sticking with the rogue mage druid and it's going to be important that they win this game if they want to have that swing match in their favor i don't think we're going to see any composition changes from either side i think it's the maps that they're going to have to try and play off of on this large map it's obviously easier for min poike to sneak away and find opportunities for there's also a lot of open field that a destruction warlock would just love to have to cast chaos bolts into his opponents every trust playing a lot more cheeky at the start of game three using an aggressive demonic gateway to get on top of his opponents but he is receiving quite a bit of punishment for it as we see a smoke bomb both interrupting chaos bolt and denying heals acro smoke bombs have been on point throughout this series extending the match and executing for kills but every has finally found an opportunity to get open field advantage connecting a chaos bolt to fried kitty who then immediately ducks around the corner forcing them to switch targets to acro a little bit left behind but min Poike is there with open arms to catch him yeah unfortunately uh acro with his vendetta really didn't pull out too many defensive cooldowns looking for a little bit of damage on Volterix, but uh, Volterix has his port in a very nice defensive position i don't really see him dying in this game until very late but at that point it's just too risky to leave eritros open so I think they're just trying to get a little bit of damage out onto Volteris, control him when they can. The main target is going to be uh, Eritros in this game. Acro now getting swapped to Volteris, trying to pressure him down with the Fist of Furies. When does proc? Um, and that's going to be increasing his damage onto Eritros as Eritros looks to reconnect to the pillar, put a kidney shot on Volteriax, and I'm just, I feel like they're wasting some time here on this Windwalker mode. If we take stock of cooldowns initially in this fight, Greggy is the one who is falling slightly behind, having activated his Glyre's Medallion, which means he can't get out of crowd control for another 50 seconds at this point. If they can get a Polymorph onto him, deny healing, and then execute damage onto a different target, it's likely that Change My Mind could find a kill or at least force powerful defensive cooldowns. So Fried Kitty could be the initiator on that front, but it does appear to be the case that Change My Mind are staying very far away from the team of CGN Gold so that Minpoike can do this. Get away, jump in stealth, but Greggy with a snipe, Earthbind Totem. Greggy really MVP here on that Restoration Shaman, despite being behind all games, still finds some opportunities, but Minpoike immediately then sneaks to the other side of the pillar, and he's constantly dragging attention of the team of CGN Gold, and every time they deny his drink, they stop doing damage. That then allows Minpoike more opportunities to just safely and comfortably recover, and this is a good map selection if that strategy is what they're going to employ throughout the fight. They need to make sure that they keep implementing it throughout because at this point Minpoike is still behind on mana. Yeah, I want to see CGN Gold play hyper aggressive on to change my mind. Just make sure Minpoike can never really afford to get away and get those drinks like you were saying because they do have a massive mana lead. Acro forced to use his vanish. Gladiator safeguard trinket. That blue shield you can see on Acro. It's a lifeline if he does get too Ooh. low. It's a trinket that does proc. Full Hex gets snuck in there by Greggy. Dispelled immediately by Fried Kitty. Now Acro. Fried Kitty's still in a little bit of trouble. But I feel like Aerotross, Noel and Greggy, they're going to be so stable in this game until a little bit later on in dampening. 
Maybe not, though. Interrupt now on Greggy. Aerotrop's forced to use his unending resolve to take through this damage. This is an opportunity for Change My Mind. His Acro still has that Vendetta cooldown available. But they may want to focus on just surviving. Aerotrop's counter engages. Infernals have landed. Acro forced to retreat away. He's going to respect that destruction warlock territory. He does not want to be caught with a Chaos Bolt to the face. But now they're pinned down in the back line. Greggy has a huge mana lead over Minpoike. If they can manage to dispel his Innervate, which is available, and deny these drinks. Yes, Valtarius is denying Minpoike a lot better here in game three. I think CGN Gold can take this whole series if they deny Minpoike's drinking throughout the fight. He's constantly retreating across the map. Eritros has to create pressure whilst this is going on. Valtarius is constantly denying it and looking good so far. In this match, the Innervate timed by Minpoike. It's glowing below his frame, but no one's able to dispel it. He's getting free healing off the back of that, potentially tying his mana up at a later point in this fight. Acro now finally pulling the trigger on his Vendetta, looking for that opening he created earlier, but Greggy is more than ready to deny the kill. Earthen Wall Totem placed and soaking up this entire attack from Acro. Yeah, but like you kind of said, Sid, when Minpoike is constantly running away and looking for those drinks, Volterix, Eritros, and Greggy, they're forced to basically chase him and get off Fried Kitty, and now all of a sudden, Fried Kitty is being freed up, so it's a diversion tactic a little bit here from Change My Mind as well, really slowing down the pressure and damage that CG and Gold has. Right, interrupt on Chaos Bolt by Acro, denying some damage. Here's Minpoike jumps across the map. Who's going to deny the drink? Do they know where he is? Yes, Greggy with an Earthbind Totem Snipe once again. Acro in the meantime trying to catch Eritros as Greggy left his side but not able to find any opportunity. Fried Kitty actually finding a Polymorph with Cyclone of Valtarius. Good cross crowd control, but Eritros counter engages with the double Mortal Coil holding both players in place. No Chaos Bolt. Both teams struggling really to figure out what they want to do. It's so important that they stop Minpoike from drinking. They catch him out of bear form, disrespecting a bit, but Fried Kitty backs him up. No Barkskin trade here by Minpoike. Bold decision. Eritros now falls behind. Greggy makes a trade to stay in it. They've got Minpoike out in midfield. Maybe they can kill Fried Kitty. Nice fear timing by Eritros. Fried Kitty blinks very far away. Double Maledix forces an ice block. Nice moves by CGN Gold as they stay in this series. Yeah, and so far, CGN Gold, they have denied every single drink attempt from Minpoike, and they need to keep doing it. They have to pay attention to this because if Minpoike can ever escape, it's going to be devastating for them in the long game, but they can continuously shut it down and keep up the pressure that they have in this game. I could easily see them winning this game and the entire series. Eritros now looking for his Chaos Bolt onto Fried Kitty. Where is Minpoike? That is the question, but he's on the same pillar as Greggy. Greg is easily able to shut him down, but just watch for Minpoike constantly trying to create distance, create space, escape, and look for these drinks. I mean, mana is still equal, and we've just hit dampening, and I would say that uh, Change My Mind are behind on cooldowns, and CG and Gold are managing to pull this map actually in their advantage by denying Minpoike throughout the fight. If they can keep it up a little bit longer, I think they're actually going to be able to close this and put Change My Mind on match point. We already saw Tempo Storm, BlizzCon champion, sent home. Now potentially Minpoike as well. The newcomers in this tournament are definitely showing that they've got what it takes to be champions. Voltarius snagging in a double stun trying to force an ice block out from fried kitty it gets denied good response by minpoike although at 11 percent dampening maybe not enough defense looks to be the case acro saves the day stunning up eritros denying any pressure from him mana slowly but surely becoming more in favor of greggy if minpoike can't sneak away it's not looking good tons of chaos bolts this could be an ice block and it is two ice blocks out of the way those are the major defensive cooldowns for fried kitty he now Voltaria switches targets minpoike doesn't have much to deal with this he, Activates Innervate at least to make the healing free, but even still, their demonic gateway in aggressive. They know that they've got Change My Mind on the ropes. They just need to stay on top of them. Yeah, Minpoike manages to escape across the map. Where is Voltarix? Greggy and Eritros now forced defensive. Minpoike sitting down for a drink, but he left Fried Kitty all alone. They could take advantage of this and take him down. Minpoike can't afford to sit down. Oh! Fried Kitty in almost execute range. Iron Bark connects as well as the Temporal Shield. Fried Kitty manages to stabilize, but that pressure forces Minpoike to come back in the fight and not allow him to sneak off for those drinks. Instead of stopping the drink, they go for the kill, but they didn't get it. Now they're on the back foot from aggressive position. 
positioning him and Poike sneaks away again. Voltarius doesn't find him. He's hiding on the left corner. Voltarius doesn't know where he is as Minpoike sits in Prowl. And this is going to be a complete mana reset for Change My Mind. CGN Gold were on top of it here in game number three, but even just one opportunity for Minpoike resets the fight. CGN Gold are on the ropes to get a kill. Greggy, can you do it again? The Totemic Master on Shaman trying to carry against Minpoike's sneaky drinks. Fried Kitty gets pressured. Good counter spell here on Minpoike interrupting his heals. Acro's feared up, but Aerotross can't find the target. He's forced to go after the rogue instead. Fried Kitty is too far away. Acro backs off from Aerotross. Aerotross crosses the fight. I mean, they managed to do it on Dalaran Sewers despite us saying they're so far behind and they could potentially do it again. Yeah, there's no question about it. Windwalker Monks and Destruction Warlock, so much burst damage available. And Fry Kitty, he still doesn't have an Ice Block available for two minutes. Trinketing out of the Light Sweep and Poike still with the Iron Bark gets interrupted. Fry Kitty getting low. Can they take him down right now? Poike has to find some healing out of this. Incapacitate follows it up. Storm Earth and Fire gets used by Volterix. He's looking to get aggressive. No more Blinks available for Fry Kitty. Just tanking it out with the Temple. Temporal Shield. If Aerotross can find any damage here, they could take him down, but Acro denies with the kick into the kidney shot, slowing down all that Destruction Warlock damage. They've managed to get Polymorph on Greggy into a Cyclone, and Aerotross comes out of that unscathed with not even a cooldown trait to his name. And despite Minpoike resetting his mana, he's still struggling a bit as his mana is actually equaling out to Greggy's quite rapidly at 27% dampening. It's gonna be really difficult. Aerotross gets a fear, but Voltarius is going after Acro instead of the target that has no cooldowns. They have to kill Aerotross or Acro in crowd control, but they don't have enough damage to do it. He trades, now Aerotross gates to safety. Is it actually that safe? Acro's trying to cross. He gets feared and deflected for now. Greggy's managing to stay in it, still maintaining his mana despite all of this lead that changed my mind. We're able to establish. And Poike knows that he needs to keep going for drinks. Otherwise, Greggy might just outdo him. Yep, and Acro realizing he needs to buy him in Poike some time, decides to vanish off, but Acro is a really vulnerable target. He has no trinket, no cloak of shadows, no evasion. Volterix puts his touch of death. I don't even know who that was on. It really didn't get too much done. Maybe on Acro as he vanished off, but that was a win condition for them. I think if Volterix was a little bit more patient there, they might have been able to close out the game just waiting for Iron Bark. Anything like that, they might have had overwhelming damage to close it out, but unfortunately a missed opportunity. Acro still kiting away. Greggy's mana not doing too bad as Minpoike once again sits down for a full reset. All right, Minpoike, you've got full mana, but you don't got a lot of cooldowns. Neither player on the team has much. If they can just get Whoa. damaged, they can maybe sneak away with a kill. Chaos Bolt gets Shatter Step kicked by Acro. Acro really on point at the at those clutch moments where he would otherwise go down. Breaks up the chain. Line of sights with Minpoike. They've established the mana lead. But Greggy, Greggy did the same. He was able to get some mana in the tank. And CG and Gold still have opportunities here. They're all over Acro. Maledict activated by Greggy. Greggy MVP, both aggression and defense. Volteris, this might just be it. Acro doesn't have much. Is Iron Bark at this deep in a dampening going to be enough? Greggy says, this is enough. I'm going to lava burst you. I'm going to kill you myself. Even as the healer, he's trying to put Acro down in these final moments of the game. But Acro denies it time and time again. Acro just dancing circles right now around CGN Gold. Managed to escape with his life, but still at the cost of everything. He needs to hold on for Look another 10 seconds to have his Cloak of Shadows and Evasion. Greggy's mana is doing quite well. Minpoike getting swapped to forced to use the Bark Skin. The pressure from Volterix is immense. Vendetta does get used. Aerotross responds with the unending resolve to avoid some of that damage, but with another full fear on Minpoike, Acro could be in some trouble. Forced to trade out the Cloak of Shadows, and Acro is just having to play so defensive in this game. I mean, at this point, he's running on fumes he's got no evasion no cloak of shadows those are important cooldowns to survive against both a destruction warlock and a windwalker mugany has neither been poike no glider's medallion one more fear which is being casted could maybe close this out no he gets stopped by acro once again acro just denies the kills left and right trying to stay in this they've got aerotross on the ropes greg he's got to make a decision He's going to go for the safe play, trade Spirit Link Totem, redistribute the health of the team, and allow Aerotross to counterattack. Chaos Bolts fly in. That Iron Bark needs to be enough, but at 45% dampening, will it is the case. Smoke Bomb defensively and offensively gets to interrupt some cast bars. I do actually really like Acro's Smoke Bomb usage, but Chaos Bolts sneaks in there. There's not much defense left. If Voltarius can stay on target, they might just fall. Could be a cross kill. Aerotross is likely to fall first. Greg, he's got nothing. Acro could fall. Fist of Fury Rising Sun Kick not 
enough has been Boyke connects just enough healing in the final seconds to keep Acro afloat and keep themselves in the tournament. Play on top of Change My Mind to actually close them out. Greggy showcasing that he can go toe to toe with the top players in Europe here today, but he needs to stay on point. Even despite the length of these fatiguing matches for him, he cannot even for a second miss an opportunity to stop Minpoike from drinking. Will he be able to carry the team on his back as Acro and Fried Kitty initiate the initial assault here? They get deflected by Infernals. Eritros looks to counter engage. They actually commit a lot of Maledicts onto Eritros early on. I don't think it's going to really result in too much as Acro is forced to retreat away. Voltarius is going to switch to target, different target out in the open, and this is definitely good coordination by both Eritros and Voltarius. but Fried Kitty knows the map. He's going to blink back into that room on the left corner. Acro is going to use center pillar to line of sight, and then Minpoike can heal both players, but he was actually out in the open, and a Chaos Bolt is going to close in there. Eritros needs to basically triangulate on whoever doesn't have line of sight as much as possible to deal as much damage as he can to run Minpoike out of mana. Voltarius initiates crowd control with the paralysis, but it was preemptively Iron Park from Minpoike. Really good, nice read there on his part, denying all the damage and equalizing his team's health. Yeah, the beginning of that game, we saw Vendetta from Acro, we saw Icy Veins from Fried Kitty, and the only defensive cooldown that they managed to pull out was the Earthen Shield Totem from Greggy, and that is just not enough with those offensives. So, good start for CGN Gold. Mortal Coil now on Fried Kitty as Eritros is looking to connect. Blink out of line of sight. Nicely done by Fried Kitty. Trying to avoid some damage. Frozen Orb gets dropped. Acro still all over him. Manages to find the full kidney shot. Draggy deflects with the Earthen Shield Totem once again. And the pressure coming in from CGN Gold is quite good this game. Acro wants to fight at the, or Eritros wants to fight at this ramp so he can drag Acro out of line of sight and maybe Chaos Bolt from on top. I like positioning here from Eritros, although maybe he should lay a demonic gateway so that when Change My Mind retreat, he can immediately continue the chase. At this point, mana is equal, but Greggy usually takes the lead unless Minpoike can sit down and regenerate. So keep your eyes on Minpoike if he's ever sneaking away. Currently, he's looking for Cyclone. That should have been denied by Greggy. Greggy wants this. Will desperately stay in the tournament. If he loses this game, his team will be knocked out. Change my mind. Will advance. And it's looking like it may be the case here. Acro gets punched down. Tons of damage. But once again, Minpoike reads it and preemptively activates Iron Bark, soaking up a huge amount of this pressure. Acro still on low health, though. Chaos Bolt's being casted. Iron Bark's defense has faded. Acro denies it with Kidney Shot. Polymorph snuck in by Fried Kitty. They've left him open. He secured crowd control. Eritros uses Demonic Gateway to try and get to safety in the room with that Ring of Peace, denying Acro from reconnecting, constantly getting bounced back. But even still with the Ring of Peace, zoning them out, Eritros holds on at very low health. They switch to Greggy. They get him caught in a Kidney Shot. There's no backup. Actually, a Chaos Bolt snuck in. Acro definitely wanted to line of sight that. A bit of a misplay on his part. Now he's very low health and unable to keep up the chase. I think that Moike actually sat down for a drink there, resetting his mana, so that was nicely done. When his team has pressure, that's an opportunity for him to basically sneak away while Greggy, Eritros, and Volterix are distracted. Dark Soul gets used by Eritros, increasing his damage. Fried Kitty could be in a little bit of trouble here with the way Minpoike's position is just so far away, out of the fight. Very difficult for Eritros to actually land these fears, especially with Acro backing him up. Amazing kicks, line of sight from Fried Kitty. And the teamwork coming in from Change My Mind is really solid this game to avoid CGN Gold's damage. I actually think Runes of Lord would have been the better pick, not because I wanted to say my catchphrase, but because we saw in North America Maldiva's team implement this strategy. But in the meantime, Fried Kitty has to ice block. Finally, some pressure here for CG and Gold. Perhaps they can keep themselves in this tournament. In the meantime, counter aggression here by Acro. Vendetta activated and boosting his damage immensely. He can't stay on target, though, from Voltarius' Ring of Peace. Finally sneaking in. Polymorph, though, secured. Could be a bit of a throwaway on Greggy's part. He had ways to deny that and now has to make a cooldown trade. A massive one, in fact, with Unending Resolve having a three minute cooldown quite a powerhouse one you can't afford to throw away and greggy's defense is starting to crack here change my mind have an opening yep there definitely is an opening in this matchup for them eritros caught in midfield still taking a lot of damage from this assassination rogue but most of the damage has been used already from change my mind icy veins down vendetta down eritros is going to feel quite comfortable pushing in trying to get some counter pressure they need to get the second ice block from fried kitty he gets interrupted whirling dragon punch chaos bolt as well then Poike deflects with the Iron Bark to avoid some of that damage. Fried Kitty going to be kiting away. And now they turn their attention on to Acro with no evasion. Voltaire's going to be able to put out huge pressure. Touch of Death gets used. He could get first it down. Eritros gets denied with the Kidney Shot. You can see Acro is going to be kiting away. Uses the Vanish as well to escape some of that damage. 
and really uh, not allow them to get the damage that they needed to force Mpoike to spend more mana. Mana has been more and more and so in favor of Greggy. Mpoike having a hard time here as he gets spell locked. Tons of damage on Acro. Well timed Shadow Fury, Chaos Bolt. No Cloak of Shadows. Bit of a greedy move there by Acro as he is going to stay alive. And Poike starts to stabilize. And now he can use Cloak of Shadows at a later time. But that cost a lot of Poike's mana to recover from that lack of trade. Now we see Acro re engaging. Crowd control onto all three members of CG and Gold. Every Tross isolated. This was the moment that changed my mind. I've been setting up for the past minute and a half, but they get completely deflected by Voltarius. Every Tross reverses with a fear, securing a Glyrus Medallion, potentially an ice block. Voltarius carrying hard at this moment in time. Yeah, Fry Kitty trying to get away. Minpoike, I think, was looking for a drink, but unfortunately able to find it. Fry Kitty just pressured so much. This is exactly what CG and Gold needs to do. They can't stop Minpoike from drinking. They need to make sure that they have the counter pressure on Fried Kitty. Voltaire still putting pressure out onto Afro, really taxing Minpoike's mana, making sure he has to have Hots on Acro as well as Fried Kitty to keep his team alive. All right, Minpoike is completely tapped on mana. This is where Greggy comes in. He has to stop him. He's sitting down in midfield. No one sees him. Aerotrons are getting pressured. They have to stop his drink, but they're just not stopping it. They have to actually spirit link while Minpoike is drinking. It's almost bad manner by Change My Mind. They now have the mana lead just in time moving into death. Anthony, CG and Gold are trying to do something quick and get a kill. Fried Kitty's got cooldowns. They managed to at least get Ice Block despite that. Now a Hex during Ice Block. Nice timing there. He can't dispel Hex with D-Curse in Ice Block, so he just decides to cancel it and dispel the Hex, allowing Minpoike to heal, but maybe allowing himself to be vulnerable. Minpoike is sneaking away. Greggy sees him, but it's too little too late. They had to snipe him with a totem on that drink earlier. They could have closed the match up, but now it's anyone's game. You have to give credit to Minpoike Okay, though normally a wrestler druid he'll run across the entire map then shadow meld and look for the stealth drinks but then poike in the middle of the battle just uses the shadow meld sitting down and then it's not obvious where he's running and hiding to as he's hiding in plain sight but cg and gold they weren't able to find him and oh. now the big mana lead once again fried kitty in oh. a lot of trouble though as he gets low and poike has to play catch up do they have the damage to take him down fried kitty blinks out a line of sight trying to avoid eritros acro switches to voltaire he exits fried kitty finally makes his way back to him and Poike getting caught up, but Volterix still all over him. But I think the kill p attempt has been lost. Volterix not going to be able to take him down in this situation. Fry Kitty blinks in once again. Maybe. For the damage on Eritros. Sheep on Greggy. Ring of Peace gets used by Volterix to keep him alive. Evan Bolt cast out, but doesn't get denied. Eritros still getting bursted down, but the damage just isn't there through Earthen Chill Totem. Yeah, both teams stabilize, and actually, Greggy's got the mana lead again. Somehow, some way, Greggy is keeping his team in the fight definitely the map advantage if we do go to a game five they will lose that which is going to be critical for the rest of this series even though Greggy is battling his heart out inevitably the setting of the final fifth game could be just enough for change my mind to reverse this series and stay in the tournament and Poike may need to try and find an opportunity to reset his mana Greggy has to deny it in the meantime a shadow fury is preventing him Poike from healing and getting away to drink a fear now as well by Eritros great crowd control acro on the ropes when Poike catches a quick siftman Voltarius stays on target and now Eritros gets denied on any damage they drop frozen orb they need to kill Eritros or force on any resolve and Poike in the room here off to the sides who is gonna stop the drink is now the question Greggy can't get over there that frozen orb just holding him in place he's trying to get around the corner to snipe him with the earthbind totem but I don't believe he was able to when Poike keeps it cool calm and collected resets his mana to full and more than likely secures his team the match yeah that was a very nice drink from Mpoike Fried Kitty with the ice block coming back up that's going to make him very durable against CGN Gold Afro though still at pressure point for their team. They might be able to take him down. Incapacitate on Minpoike. Can they turn it around? Acro shadow steps out of line oh. of sight. Volterix still all over him. Minpoike has no trinket. Got into a full fear, but Acro with the vanish able to stay alive a little bit longer, giving Minpoike enough time to connect the heal over time. In fact, doesn't even trade out the iron bark, and Acro will survive due to beautiful kiting. A gladiator safeguard paying off for Acro there, and I'm wondering if they should even try to kill Acro in this game. Every time they target him, he somehow manages to sneak away. Perhaps a different member of 
the team is who they should be going after. Currently, Minpoike and Fried Kitty under fire as Ari Tross initiates an assault here at 28% dampening. If they can stay aggressive and on top of them, maybe they can just bully them into the ground. Acro gets swapped to again. Valtarius moves in, now moves to Fried Kitty. Ari Tross needs to get in line of sight. Chaos Bolt cast does not get blinked. Fried Kitty blinks late, now has to ice block. Misplay on the part of Change My Mind. Now they flip flop over to Acro. He has been isolated by Eric Tross's fear. This is the aggression I wanted to see from CGN Gold. Great crowd control, great swaps, tons of damage as Fried Kitty looks likely to go down. The only thing keeping them going was Min Poike's drinks earlier in the fight. He looks for a defensive cyclone, gets it. They sneak in the polymorph. Now maybe they can reverse for a kill on Eric Tross. It's looking good so far with that counter spell well placed. Maledix in reverse as Eric Tross tries to counter aggress, but a cyclone. Trinket Spearling Totem. Now they trade equally. This could even be a cross kill moving forward, but Greggy's on the ropes. Look at his team. How's he going to recover, Ben? I don't know. Acro still has a vendetta. Eritros is going to be in a lot of trouble. He pulls the trigger. Eritros getting lower. Acro in the meantime also taking quite a bit of damage. Both teams on the ropes. CGN Gold trying to survive one last assault coming in from Change My Mind. Greggy holding on by a thread. Eritros barely surviving, tanking the Frozen Orb, looking for fears. Greggy gets interrupted. Do they have the damage to take Eritros down? Acro and Fried Kitty still with relenting pressure eventually take Eritros down and close out the series three to one. Yeah, beautifully done as well. And already we're just feed versus the fake zebras. We're all tied up one and one. Who is going to find themselves on match point? Who is going to get a little bit further into this tournament? Keep in mind, folks, we're doing a brand new thing. You have just entered in the middle of history, the longest series that has ever been played in battle for